All right, <clears throat> today we'll talk about parallel vectors, magnitude, and adding and subtracting vectors. Uh, we're going to do these, ex these exercises in class. Are these vectors equal? And it turns out they are equal. Um, they're also parallel. Um, uh, equal vectors have to have the same magnitude and also the same direction. Uh, but we could take this vector and draw it anywhere in the plane and it's still the same vector even though it moved to a different location. So these vectors are parallel and um, we can also look at their components. Vector D is over 2 up 1 and vector E is also over 2 up 1 so we can see that they are equal. Before we do the next problem, let's talk about um, a little bit of what we did yesterday. How can we get from A to C? The vector from A to C. There's a lot of different ways to get from A to C. Um, so, if starting at A, we could go A, D, plus D, C. We could also have A, B, B, D, D, C. A, C is starting at A to B. Then we'll add B to D. And then plus D to C. So there's many ways to get from A to C. <coughs> and um, we can go A to E, E to C. AC equals AE, vector AE plus vector EC. So we just need to know that for our next problem. Okay, we have points. So A, B, C, and D are vertices of a parallelogram. We need to find D. So here's a common uh, question for vectors. Let's start with seeing where the points are. A, B, and C. So the parallelogram is going like this. And we can see that D is somewhere over there. By looking at the graph, we can figure it out. But if we had fractions, we wouldn't be able to do that. So let's um, look for some characteristics of the parallelogram. We know that AB is parallel to DC, wherever D is. We can say that AB is parallel to DC. Not only is it parallel, but it has the same magnitude. So we'd say AB, vector AB is equal to vector DC. And then we also have BC is equal to AD. And <coughs> we need to... Um, so we know that all the position vectors are OA, OB, and OC. Um, let's write down what we know. OA is negative 2, 1. OB is 0, 2. We need to uh, make an equation that uses these, these vectors so that we can calculate the uh, vector OD. We need to find find vector OD, which would tell us the coordinates of point D. So let's look at some observations. 
we know that OD is equal to OA plus AD. And we saw this yesterday. If we go O to A and A to D, it's the same as going O to D. If we add them together, we get that vector. Um, we're trying to find OD, so let's look at some of the ways we could represent that. We could go from O to D. Uh, we could also do OC plus CD. OD, OC plus CD. Um, since we want to find OD, we're going to use one of these. There are other uh, observations we can make, but we just want to get from O to D. And that's our goal. So let's use this one. And We have um, OA, we already know, but AD, we don't know because we don't know D. But AD is equal to BC, so we could say this has to be true. Um, since I know the points for points B and C, I can calculate this vector, and I know that OA is negative 2, 1. In the previous lesson, we saw that BC is the same as C minus B. C, 1, negative 2, minus B, 0, 2. 1 minus 0, negative 2 minus 2. And we'll get negative 1, negative 3 for OD. So that means that point D is negative 1, negative 3. OK, um, we have point B. C and D are points on a parallelogram. Find A. Same question, different points. Pause the video and try that one. So if we have these points, then A must be over here somewhere. And let's just follow the same format as before. We know that um, C is 3, 1, D is negative 2, 2, and B is 1, negative 1. So we have parallel lines here. We can say that um, BC is equal to D A. And we can say that D B is equal to A C. And we know that O B is one negative one. O C three one. O D negative two two. We need to find OA, vector OA. Let's look at observations. That might help us find OA. So I can look at OA. And to get from O to A, I could go OD plus DA. We could also do OC plus CA.
and it doesn't matter which one we use. Let's just use the first one. So we have OA, OD plus DA. And we don't know A, so this is the one that we'll have to substitute for. We do know OD and uh, DA. So up here, DA is the same as BC. And um, OD plus BC is OC minus OB. This is OD. OD is negative 2, 2. OC is 3, 1. And OB is 1, negative 1. Negative 2, 2. 3 minus 1, 1 plus 1, 0, 4. So the uh, vector OA is 0, 4, so point A is 0, 4. Right, magnitude is just the length of the vector. So if we need the length, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so with the vector from A to B, we want to find its length or magnitude. Um, Let's find out find what the vector AB is. AB is OB minus OA. OB minus OA. Okay, we could find a magnitude <coughs> by using the Pythagorean theorem. And we see that this is... Um, one, two, three, four. So this side is four. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That side is six. We can do the Pythagorean theorem with Okay, or with vectors, we have this notation. The magnitude of AB is written like this. Absolute value symbol with a vector means magnitude. And all we do is square this, square that, and add them and square root. That's always what we do for the magnitude. Square, square, add, and square root. It is just the Pythagorean theorem. And we'll get the same magnitude. Okay, A is negative 3, 4, B is 2, negative 1, and pause the video and try to find the magnitude.
AB is B minus A. B is 2, negative 1, minus A. 5, negative 5. The magnitude of AB is 5 squared plus negative 5 squared square root. And we get radical 50 or 5 radical 2. Okay, here's another characteristic of vectors. If we, want it, uh, uh, if we want a vector that's a multiple of a given vector, we just, get the, we just multiply. Uh, it doesn't matter what direction it's going. And uh, we'll just do this once. So that's vector A. And it says we want a vector that's three times that length. So all we do is keep copying that. One, two, three. That total length would be 2a. And that will be 3a. So 3a is going to be three times the vector a, which is 9, negative 3. We can see that there are 9, negative 3 would be 3a. Here's another question. All right, so um, we have to substitute the vector for A, for B, do this arithmetic, and then find the magnitude. So we're going to have 2 vector A, 3 vector B, magnitude of that. This will be 2, 6, negative 18, 6, And we just keep adding. We get um, negative 16, 12. And we're going to have negative 16 squared plus 12 squared square root. And that's 256 plus 144. That's 400. And we get 20. I don't need the parentheses there. Um, it's okay if you have them, though. And then uh, find so we're going to um, do all of this work and. Just, uh, this is just a different notation. Normally, we wouldn't switch the uh, order. Sometimes the questions 
uh, not the order, the notation. So sometimes questions will give you a mixture of notation just to see if you know what it means. So pause the video and try this one. All right. Let me just add all the horizontal components, 14 plus 10, and we get a uh, 21 minus 2, 19 plus 3 plus 4, 23. So that's 25, 23, 14, 24. And we're going to square each of them and then square root. Remember, we're only doing all of this because of these lines, because it's magnitude. If it didn't have these magnitude symbols, then we would stop here, and this would just be a vector. But since it has magnitude, we have to do this. And this is approximately 33.242. Here's another uh, type of question, testing uh, our understanding of the notation. And um, this can be a little confusing because that's a vector, that's a vector, and this whole thing represents a vector. I and J would represent a, uh, or it could be written as a column vector of 2, 5. So let's rewrite everything as a column vector and then we can solve for P. B is for 1. And then this is 2, 5. So we want to make sure we don't mix up the notation, even though it might be like that in the problem. So we have um, P. And let's go ahead and subtract that. So we have 2, 5, minus 4, 1. And we need to choose P so that 2P is negative 2. Um, and it just has to work on the other one. There's no choice. So P is negative 1. P is negative 1. So that's how we can solve for P. Because we know that the horizontal component here has to be the same as the horizontal component there. So we break this up into two separate equations. All right, and we're going to stop there.